Hello everyone, I am Majesty A. Regis, 20 years old, and my major is crop protection specialized in entomology. My topic for today is all about the respiratory system of mites. Respiration by means of trachea is characteristic of most mites, except the youngest larval stages and the numerous representatives of the order Acaridida. In mites belonging to the suborder Mesostigmata, the tracheal system begins with two openings localized symmetrically at both sides of the body above coxae, between the third and fourth pair of the legs. Forwards from each other, or each stigma runs a dough-shaped protrusion of the cuticle, which is called the peritrim. The mites from the family Parasitidae possess a tree in stars, a larva, a protonym, and deutonym. The larva lacks the tracheal system in both stigmata and peritrims. The later stages possess trachea. The protonym possesses stigmata, but their peritrims are very short. In deutonyms and the adult mites, the wild respiratory system has fully developed. Respiration involves the intake of oxygen, its transportation will dissolve in water or in air into the body and its subsequent use by cells and tissues in the body. The elimination of carbon dioxide produced from metabolic process also must occur. There are diverse respiratory systems in mites in the sense that the location of stigma or stigma or the opening of the tracheal system varies. The stigmata or acaridida, which includes stored product mites, typically lack stigma, and the prostigmata or actinenida, which include plant feeding mite families, have stigmata in the dorsal anterior region of the mite. The stigmatal openings of cryptostigmata or the soul or beetle mites are hidden or cryptic, and the metastigmata have the stigmatal opening of special plates just behind the fourth pair of legs, and finally, the mesostigmata have their stigmata openings on the side of the body between legs on the third and fourth on a perimetral shield. And there are two types of respiratory organs. This is the book lungs and the trachea. In book lungs, book lungs are actually a stack of many flat hollow plates which are saturated with hemolymph. Hemolymph is like blood for arachnid and it's blue because it contains hemocyanin, a copper-based substance. Much like the red blood cells in our bodies, Hemocyanin binds to oxygen and transport it to areas in the arachnid's body where the concentration of oxygen is lower. It is also or it also takes carbon dioxide waste to places where it can leave the body. Hemolymph helps with gas exchange in the book lungs because it flows oxygen through the plates and exchanges oxygen and carbon dioxide through passive diffusion. Diffusion of gases occurs between the hemolymph circulating within the leaf-like structures or the lamellae stuck like pages in a book within the pocket and the air in spaces between these thin structures. Another type of respiratory organ is the trachea. It is a hollow air conducting set of tubes. These tubes open to the outside of the animal through pores called spiracles, which are found on the animal's abdomen. Here, 
the animal can both take in air and release carbon dioxide waste. The tracheal tubes are lined within the chitin, which is hard substance that is also found in the exoskeletons of insects. What's interesting about the trachea is that it's, it believes to be a relatively modern anatomical feature in arachnids. Those that use only tracheal system include pseudoscorpions, daddy long legs, mites, and ticks. Diffusion of gases occurs within the fluid-filled tubes of ramify over the internal organs. And most spiders have both, and small, extremely small mites have only cut cutaneous respiration. And that's all. Thank you.